I'm here to present generalized action-based bow recovery model using 360 data, the work that Hugo and I developed for this conference. So first of all, who are we? Well, I am Ricardo, just as Corinne said. I'm an undergrad student at Universidade Federal de Minas Gerais, that states for Federal University of Minas Gerais, that has the best department of computer science in Latin America. And I am also a researcher there in the sports analytics lab. Ugo is, is, studies also in the same university as I do. He's a researcher in the lab, and he is a data scientist at Clube Atlético Mineiro that won last year the Brazilian League and the Brazilian Cup. You can see him actually holding the Brazilian League there. So now let's get into the paper. Uh, we often hear on the media some managers and players say expressions like, get the, back, the ball back as soon as possible and don't let them breathe. And with these words, we start to wonder, well, how to evaluate pressure? With that question in mind, we started to do some researching, and we found out a lot of inspiration in KU Lovin's work. First, in VAEP, with the use of probabilistic classifiers and the creation of the action concept, the PEP that Hobbes did and presented here earlier in the other paper used created peer recovery, extending this idea of the framework of VAEP using pressure events. And another work that used tracking data to extend the peer recovery. Peer recovery is the probability that the ball will be recovered by the defending team. So with that in mind, we created the generalized action-based ball recovery model using 360 data, also known as GABR. So what we want to evaluate here is whether the team is gonna to have the ball back, is going to do a ball recovery. That means it's a possession change label. And what we thought in, the, in soccer terms is that sometimes not only pressing can, have, can handle the team to get the ball back, sometimes other movement of defense helps that. So we want to do that for all actions, not only press, pressure events. So that's why it is generalized. And as we want to see this movement, we need some pitch control fe features using 360 data. So what we are proposing is a new approach to calculate P recovery, and we will also calculate P recovery PC. I'll explain this difference further. Using probabilistic classifiers to build the model. With that, we create a novel metric to finish our framework, defensive dynamics impact, DDI and we provide some teams and players insights. So now let's get into it. First of all, the label. Our label is whenever that a possession, the possession team name changes from one action to the following one. And we also want to see that in the near future. So we set K as our action window label. Now that we have our label, what do we want to estimate? So given a, a game stage or size style, we want to estimate the probability that the defending team will get the ball back, will recover the ball in the near future. And we will do that considering non-pitch control features and also considering it. So what is the difference of the features? Peer recovery, we will consider special, complex, and game context features, those are all action features, and peer recovery PC differentiates itself just adding pitch control features. So these action features are deeply inspired by KU Lovin's work. However, we made some changes in the pedal and in the complex features. First of all, in the pedal features, we removed the type and the result. And we do that because, let's say, Van Dyke makes a wrong pass. Well, of course, there will be a ball recovery because it's the nature of a wrong pass, and that's why we will remove it. Also, in the complex features, we need to disconsider the possession team well because that's our label. And what do we obtain with those action features? Well, basic action information, the game's velocity because complex features consider tau previous actions, 
And also we add context because a team that is losing one nil will not play the same as if they were winning four nil, right? So now let's talk about pitch control features. And we had this decision to create metrics to get the spatial context. But the problem is pitch, con pitch control's complexity. And to make it feasible, we transformed the Python implementation into a Cython one. And now in only two seconds, we can have a pitch control frame. But we have a gazillion actions, so we just took a long time just to obtain those. But, but once we obtained it, we generated some features. And those are the average pitch control, both for attacking and defending team, the transition probability, the average pitch control in the radius near the ball, and the most relevant pitch control. And this feature is a little bit more complex. So what we do is we rank the players in order to get the most relevant pitch control players for each team, and then we will select N players for both of them. Once we do that, we put in our model, the average pitch control in space where where its value is greater than a certain threshold and the area on the pitch in these spaces. So before I go into the model, a little bit more about data. We have English Premier Leagues for the last couple of seasons and we split training and validation in 80 and 20%, but we used for the test our games just to provide more insights for us. Now finally going to the model. The first design choice that we have is a machine learning algorithm. And here we always have this trade-off between time and accuracy, and we went off and chose XGBoost. But you could use Randall Forest or CatBoost, for example. The next design choice is about the number of players per team. So as we are dealing with 360 data, we have a lit limited number of players that are visible for each frame. We are also dealing with machine learning algorithms and therefore we have a fixed length of tracking fe of features. So let's say that we define the number of players that we ranked in the most relevant as two. So once we define that, what's the behavior of the model when we have more players? Well, we will only consider that. And when we have less players, what happens is we will not calculate, estimate, I'm sorry, peer recovery PC because we consider that we do not have enough spatial context to do such calculation. We will define and uh, for attacking and defending team S5. This design choice inflects a lot in the next one, that is the game state size. And well, the trade-off for game state size is having more information and redundant information. However, the nature of the pitch control features lead us to a different behavior. You can see this diagram here that for the action features, we we'll always have enough information. They always will have information. So the game state size could be any value. However, for the pitch control features, if we look down the road here in this example, well, we have only two players in the action I minus two. But we would have enough information already just with the other actions. So to avoid this problem, what if we just make the pitch control features game state size a little bit lower than the action features? Well, that's what we will do. That's why we divide the subsequent action size in two parts, the first one with the action features that has a size of three, and the second one, the pitch control features that has the size of one. So the last design choice is about the K, so the ball recovery action window label. And here is the trade-off between having a shorter or longer term in the possession change, and we saw that for us, K equaling to four was better. But Something interesting when we vary the K is the absolute difference between peer recovery and peer recovery PC averages. And we can see that the values are very small. And one might say, well, then P 
peer recovery and peer recovery PC do not differenti differentiate itself themselves. Well, that's not the case as we're going to see in one example further on the road. But it means that peer recovery and peer recovery PC are both estimating the same thing. What is the probability that the definitive team will get the ball? In the evaluation, we see the same behavior. They have a similar performance. And just to state here, we use normalized Brier score because we will subtract probabilities when we are doing DDI. So enough of this. Let's get into the example. I think is the more exciting part. So we had a set of five actions of Liverpool against Leeds United. And the first three actions, as you can see, have a pretty stable peer recovery. However, the first action is actually a wrong, is actually a wrong action by Van Dijk. So for our model, as we are not considering the type and the result, that's just on him. He made the mistake. If we look into the fourth action, you can see that there is a race, and that's because the Phil Phillips pass is longer and to a more central region of the pitch, so it's a riskier one. That's, that's why the recovery gets higher. And then Henderson finally gets the ball back to Liverpool, and it is a stable value. But the cool part is when we compare peer recovery and peer recovery PC. And in this first pass of Van Dijk, we can actually see that peer recovery PC is 50% higher than peer recovery. And that's because our model is capturing the spatial context. You can see on the green areas that Van Dijk doesn't have a lot of space to make the pass, and where he is passing is a region that pitch control is not big for Liverpool. In the next action, a similar situation, Calvin Phillips doesn't have enough pitch control to make the pass, and that's, why, that's the cause that peer recovery PC will get higher than peer recovery. Now, the coolest part for me is this next action. Finally, Elder Costa had pass makes peer recovery PC gets lower than peer recovery, and that's because of the spatial contest again. But in the Helder's Costa's pass, Leeds United has a lot of pitch control. So it, here we can see how peer recovery and peer recovery PC just differentiates themselves. In this next, the wrong pass made by Phillips, the riskier one, we can see that peer recovery and peer recovery PC gets higher, but peer recovery PC, it's lower than peer recovery because he has the space to make this pass. And the last one is just a dribble by Henderson to symbolize that he got the ball back. And it's a situation that peer recovery and peer recovery PC are very equal. So once I showed you guys how peer recovery and peer recovery PC are different, we define DDI, the defensive dynamic impact. And DDI will be peer recovery PC minus peer recovery. The greater the DDI values are, it means that the defending team's position actually increases their chances of getting the ball back. And when they are lower, it means that the defending team's position actually decreases their chances of getting the ball back in that certain game state. And the first application that we have is the rank of the top teams in peer recovery in DDI, I'm sorry. So, we can see here Leeds United, Liverpool, and Manchester City, they are the top teams that you, you would think that want to have the ball back as soon as possible, as I've said in the first slide. So that in, although there are low values in the evaluation, we can, see, as I said in the evaluation, we can see that the model can see what teams are better in DDI. Another application is well on the pitch does a team perform well. And we can see here Leeds United that is on the top of our table and Newcastle United that is on the bottom. And in this green area that of Leeds United, we can see 
that they actually raise their probability of getting the ball back in almost 20%. Meanwhile, Newcastle United just raised it by 1%. So that's the, how those teams work differently. And since we are talking a lot about Leeds United, we can see in the side of view of their last manager. So in Loco Bielsa here, we can see that their value is four times better than Leeds United Jesh Marsh. And we all know that the philosophy of a local's game is just to have the ball back, and DDI is showing exactly that. So now that we've talked about DDI and applications for teams, I want to leave behind that and see applications for peer recovery and for players. But before just saying that, we cannot evaluate the defending side of the players because the stats bomb 360 data does not identify who is on the pitch. They only identify the, why, the position of the players. So we can see in the attacking side of you, in the attacking side and who is with the ball. If we take peer recovery PC and we wonder, well, in situations that the probability that they will lose the ball is very high and yet they don't lose it, who are the players? And we can see there are the most progressive players on the league, perhaps. Bruno Fernandes, Kevin De Bruyne, Harry Kane, João Cancelo and Rafinha. And we've seen those players in other presentations that were here today. Another application is possible hospital balls. And for those who don't know what hospital balls are, Hospital balls is when the player has a lot of control of the situation, the team itself has a lot of control, and then one player just makes a silly, stupid action, and then the team just loses the ball, the teammate that has no space to do a good action. And well, I just described the second place here. And well, we also have Bruno Fernandes and João Cancelo, and, that's weird, they were in the last rank. So that's why here we have possible hospital balls and not certain hospital balls because those players, as they are very progressive, sometimes they will have a ball in a situation that they, their probability of losing it is very small. But when they are doing that action, they are actually trying to make the team get closer to the goal. And we know that on the defensive side, there's less space to work on. So the probability that the other team could ba get back the ball will be higher. And out of curiosity here, in England, what is called possible hospital balls, in Brazil, we call fire camp balls. So it's a little curiosity in how literature is different. In conclusion, we have new frameworks and metrics with peer recovery and peer recovery PC and defining DDI, a novel metric. And we provide some new insights for team and players and we know that a lot more can be explored. In our future work, we want to release a Python package with the improvements we made with Cyton. We want to extend JBR to traditional tracking data and we also want to explore more pitch control features. We would like to thank Club Atlético Mineiro and Professor Wagner Meira Jr. that providing the funding for us to be here today. We are very grateful and also thank Statsbom for the opportunity to be here. And of course, thank you for listening to me. Here's our contact if we want to reach us out.